capitalism has no future for humanity. Nowhere is this clear than on the question of climate change, an existential threat for the world's population. The COP26 climate summit, held over the past weeks in Scotland, was yet another worthless international conference. As usual, all the capitalist governments rejected the necessary scientific measures to avert disaster. Even if they meet all the current emission reduction commitments, temperatures are likely to rise 2.7 Celsius this century, which could render the planet uninhabitable. The ruling elite here is the leader in this field. Australia was recently ranked last out of 64 countries when it came to measures to address the climate cl crisis. The Morrison Coalition government's recently announced climate plan is insistent on doing nothing to reduce emissions for the foreseeable future. Instead, it will provide billions of dollars to corporations and big business. The Labour opposition refuses to put forward any clear policy. The Greens, who pose as being environmentally conscious, want to form a coalition government with Labour after the next election, a government that would faithfully serve the major coal companies and other carbon emitters. The perspective of appealing to or pressuring capitalist politicians has failed. The climate crisis is a product of capitalism, which subordinates everything, including the environment, to the profit interests of big business. We have seen the same brutal logic of the capitalist market in the pandemic. Governments have scraped lockdowns and safety measures, allowing millions to die so that full profit-making activities can resume whatever the impact on health and lives. The technical means exist to halt and reverse climate change and eliminate the coronavirus pandemic. The problem is not technological, but social and political. The vast resources required to solve these problems are squandered on a very small minority. Capitalism is leading humanity to a dead end. Climate change and the pandemic are both demonstrating the need for a new socialist perspective. This alternative requires the reorganization of society on the basis of human need above the predatory interests of a financial oligarchy. The division of the world into antagonistic nation states must be ended. The problems facing the world's people are global in scope and require international collaboration on the basis of science. Young people must take up a fight for socialism in the working class to realize this perspective. This also means a struggle against Australia's anti-democratic electoral laws, which are aimed at suppressing any alternative to the major parties and preventing genuine discussion on the issues we face, including climate change. Contact the IYSSE today to join the fight.